Rescue workers in northern Gaza are scrambling to find survivors. There are fears that dozens of people could be trapped under debris of destroyed buildings. After Israeli strikes on the Shati refugee camp, at least 39 people were reported to have died. That's according to Palestinian and local hospital officials. This Saturday, Israel had said its fighter jet struck two Hamas military sites uh, in the Gaza City area but did not elaborate for their details. Now, these deaths come a day after at least 25 people were said to have been killed on strikes on tent camps uh, on, near the southern city of Rafa. For more, we can speak to our correspondent, Iris Mackler, standing by in Jerusalem. She's been following developments. Uh, Iris, what more can you tell us about these attacks? I can tell you that we can sadly add another attack to that list uh, in Gaza within the last hour or so we're seeing reports of attacks once again in Gaza City, this time near the UNRWA, that's the UN Refugee Agency headquarters there. So what we're really seeing is a lot of attacks in the north of, this is what's different, I would say, looking at that, since we don't yet have, uh, we know that they are looking for survivors, we don't have a death toll for that most recent attack. What we're looking at is uh, a series of attacks in the north, in Gaza City, which we haven't seen for some time. Airstrikes once again, with Israel saying that it's targeting Hamas leaders. Uh, and they say that in one of the attacks yesterday in northern Gaza, they did actually um, target and kill a Hamas commander, Ra Raed Saad. Um, but I have to say they did announce his death earlier and that was not the case. We haven't heard a confirmation from Hamas. What is interesting is it's at, one Israeli analyst is saying that perhaps this is this return to targeting Israel's return to targeting Hamas leaders is a sign that negotiations for a ceasefire and a hostage withdrawal have really ground to a halt. And for that reason, or that's a sign that Israel is returning to these targeted killings, uh, it is also very difficult to actually establish what exactly has been going on because there is no mention of the Hamas of Hamas commanders' deaths from the Palestinian sources, no mention of Hamas fighters' deaths uh, from the Palestinian sources. Israel, for example, flat out denied that it had carried out the airstrike in Al Mawasi. In fact, two strikes in that camp uh, about 36 hours ago now. Uh, so that implies that they are saying it's a Hamas or other militant group strike. So very varied responses and replies. But nevertheless, we can see the Palestinian casualty toll mounting, even if it does include Hamas fighters, combatants within it. Yeah, and in Tel Aviv on Saturday, we did see those massive anti-government protests, organizers mm -hmm. claiming it was the largest anti-government protest since the war in Gaza began. How much pressure is the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu under? He's under a great deal of pressure, I would say. You know, these are not his voters yet, but in every poll that's taken, he is no longer preferred prime minister and it is not this coalition that would form the next government. Uh, that has an effect on this government of making it cling to power. Nevertheless, the pressure is immense. And you can see that there's been an enormous amount of criticism of him, not just from the street, but you know there is this ongoing debate, if you like, that he has begun with Washington about how much aid Washington is giving, with he, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, putting out videos uh, saying that um, America is not helping or Washington is not doing all it can. Now, that's an enormous amount of criticism from former American ambassadors to Washington, from former American military attaches to Washington, from people, Israelis now based in Washington, saying that the Prime Minister is, um, it's endless and relentless attack on Israel's relationship with the, with the United States, with its greatest ally, uh, and the suggestion that he's doing it for his own political reasons. And let's remember, that's the reason that Benny Gantz, the opposition leader who joined this government for to help run the war, that's the reason that, that he left with that same allegation uh, that, that Benjamin Netanyahu is now taking decisions not in the interests of the state of Israel, but in his own, the interests of his own political survival. All right, Iris, thank you very much. Iris Mackler reporting from Jerusalem.